Hello, Dr. Mike Matthews, physical therapist here with the PT411. Thanks so much for joining me. If you already haven't done so, make sure you follow, like, subscribe, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Also, make sure you visit my website, thept411.com. That way you can be kept up to speed with all of my content. Now today, we're gonna to be talking about thoracic outlet syndrome, TOS. We're gonna look at the symptoms that are associated with it, as well as how we can kind of self-assess as well. The thing with thoracic outlet syndrome, it's a little bit of a misnomer. It's not necessarily just about the thoracic area, which it is, but it's also about the neck and this entire area between our neck, our thoracic area, and coming out to our shoulder as well. So we're gonna to need to look at all these areas. We're gonna to have to roll out a few things as well. Symptoms, the most common symptoms that we're gonna see are gonna start off at about the shoulder and they can work their way down the arm. First thing, we can definitely feel pain with it. We can feel numbness, we can feel tingling, we can feel like the arm is getting cold or hot and it cannot necessarily just be that feeling there. We can actually touch it and the arm can actually feel ice cold. Those are definitely common symptoms there. But the big thing is, is anytime we're having symptoms going down the arm, the first thing we have to do is roll out the neck. It makes no sense whatsoever to automatically think we're having thoracic outlet syndrome because most of the time this is going to be something caused just by the neck so we need to take a look at that first and I did a pretty extensive video on that to begin with so make sure you head on over to the website Facebook or YouTube check out that video first before you continue on with this one now thoracic outlet syndrome can be broken down into actually four different issues in this area. The first issue can be from our anterior scalene or just our scalene muscles in general, the muscles that go from our first and second rib coming up into our few cervical vertebrae up here. Those muscles can get tight. The area between those muscles can close off. We have a nerve, artery, and vein that runs in those areas. So if that area gets tight and closed off, it can definitely impinge on that. The second one coming down into that area, we can actually have an extra rib. We can actually have an extra cervical rib coming off of our lowest cervical vertebrae as well. That can cause issues in that same area, cutting off circulation or also cutting off that nerve in that area. Now the third cause can be from our costoclavicular area or the area between our clavicle, our collarbone here, and our first rib. If that area gets closed off for any reason, we have some nerves, artery, and vein that run through there so it can be impinged on there as well. It can either be caused because the clavicle, that collarbone, collapses down into that first rib. It can also be because that first rib is coming up, up again there no matter what the cause or a little bit of combination of both no matter what the cause of that there is it can include that area as well causing these symptoms now the fourth one can be caused by tightness of our pectoralis minor region or our pec major and our pec minor combination there now our pec minor muscle is between our ribs here and it goes around and attaches to our shoulder blade our scapula and if that muscle gets tight on its own or a combination of that with our pectoralis major there that can close off an area as well there's another triangle another area of tissues there and if that muscle gets tight it's going to close off the artery the nerve and the vein in that area as well so by now you probably noticed a common theme tight muscles we definitely need to make sure all these muscles in this area stays nice and flexible another issue another cause of this is if we have these bad postures right here these bad postures can close off that area and over time these bad postures can accumulate and tighten up all those areas, tighten up all those muscles. If that occurs, not only are we gonna feel it when we're in these bad postures for long periods of time, whenever we try to correct it and those muscles start to get stretched out, that can also start to cause those symptoms as well. Another time that we can feel these with some of these issues, especially the pec minor issue, is if we start to have all these symptoms show up or some of these symptoms show up when we're doing a lot of overhead work if our arms and our hands are up above our heads for prolonged periods of time. Now the worse it is, the tighter these muscles can be, the less amount of time it's gonna take with those arms to be up here, start exacerbating to start producing those symptoms that we're having. So if our symptoms are pretty severe and it takes little time at all to make it worse with those hands up there, it's definitely a positive there as well. 
So moving on to some tests for this, we can do all these tests on our own. It's definitely better to have somebody there with you that can read your pulse as well. The first test we'll do, we will not need somebody for it at all. So a very easy one for us to do. But one of the big things is if this is getting caused by an extra rib, that cervical rib off coming off of C7 there, we're definitely gonna need other diagnostics to confirm that there's not a good way to test that out on our own. But our other tests here, the first test we're gonna do is we're bringing our shoulders up to a 90 degree angle and abduction here. We're rotating our arms here with our palms facing towards us. And all we're gonna do here is pump our hands back and forth right here. The literature says several different things. Some people might say to go for 10, 20 seconds or just a few repetitions here. There's some books that'll say do this up to three to five minutes at a time. So you definitely wanna make sure you give it some time here. You gotta make sure that your shoulders aren't elevated here. They're down and depressed here and you work on this. And what you're looking for is if those symptoms get reproduced here. Now our next test is more specific for our scaling muscles here. And this is where we're gonna need somebody else to help us out here. We're gonna have to have somebody palpate, we're gonna have to have somebody find your radial pulse here. So you're gonna have to go down from our VR eminence from this chunky part of our thumb here. You go slightly down here with a couple fingers and you're gonna have to find that radial pulse. So you'll have somebody find that pulse. They're gonna feel it the entire time here. And they're gonna bring your arm back here this way. So my arm isn't just going up to the side, it's going back this way a little bit into extension. And they're gonna hold that there. Now we're gonna test out that same side that they're holding. You're gonna tilt your head to that opposite side. And then you're gonna look up this way. From your point of view, you're looking if it's gonna produce any of your symptoms, any of your problems. From your helper's point of view, they're gonna see if your pulse changes, if it gets harder to feel, or if it goes away completely there. And that means that the artery is getting involved as well. If it's producing your symptoms from your standpoint, it could be happening from the vein, the artery or the nerve or a combination of all three there. Now the next test is more specific for our costoclavicular area, the area between our collarbone and that first rib. We're starting off the same way. They're finding that pulse, your helper is, and bringing that arm out and back a little bit. This time, all you're gonna do is sit up or stand up as tall as you can, really stick that chest out as far as you can, bringing that head back into that retracted position. And you're trying to force your rib cage as forward as you can, those shoulder blades and that neck is back as far as you can there. Big thing we're trying to do is bring those ribs up as close to that collarbone and bringing that collarbone back as far as we can. So they're back there, the same thing here. From your point of view, from your perspective, you're seeing if it's producing those symptoms. From your partner's perspective, they're seeing if there is a diminish or an absence of a pulse from holding that there. Again, same thing, holding for a minute or two. Now our next test is more specific for the pectoralis minor region. Same thing, we're palpating that radial pulse again. You, this time your partner is trying to bring your arm up and out this way. And what's happening here is when I'm going back, I'm not just coming up, I'm making sure that my arm is rotating back this way. We really gotta make sure we're getting some good tension on your pec muscles there. So you're coming back, rotating out, and taking it back as far as you can this way. And the exact same thing here. You're looking for if it's reproducing your symptoms, your partner's feeling for that pulse if that changes. So same thing there, holding that one. So if we have this problem, it can definitely develop into bigger issues. If our vein or our artery is getting compressed, it's getting impinged on, that blood flow is getting diminished, blood can start to pull. If it's the vein, that can lead to DVTs, that can lead to clots developing in that arm, those clots can definitely break free over time and go to other areas of the body. And that can cause very serious medical issues. So we definitely gotta make sure that we're addressing this problem. Same thing with the artery, decreasing that blood flow, all going down to the limb. 
So we're going to deprive all those tissues down there of oxygen and nutrients. And finally, that nerve, if that nerve is getting impinged on, especially for a long period of time, it can start to develop nerve damage in there. It takes a very, very long time for nerves to heal once we take off the offending problem, once we get that impingement or that obstruction off of that nerve. So definitely something that we need to address quickly. Another problem with the nerve is double crush syndrome. If we limit the mobility of a nerve in any part Part of the body going from the neck or the upper back the thoracic spine and you fly from there going down all the way to our fingertips if any of those nerves at any point there get less mobile the thing is they're going to start to be less mobile in other places so let's say it's at our neck or in this thoracic outlet area something's not mobile in an area it can tend to get bound down in that area and we can start to cause a cubital tunnel syndrome here or a carpal tunnel syndrome here and it's all because that nerve mobility got limited there from another source so now we have two areas where that nerve's getting bound down both up here at the thoracic outlet area or the neck area and then down here at either the elbow or the wrist or a combination of both and the longer this goes unchecked the less likely conservative treatments are going to help this out and then you're looking at some sort of surgical intervention to release that nerve and hopefully that it gets released soon enough that it can start to heal. So we're having the symptoms, we're having the classic presentation, thoracic outlet syndrome. We roll out the neck and a few other things, and we look at these special tests, and some of them, or at least one of them, is coming back positive. We need to start treating it. We're gonna cover that in next week's video, so make sure you stay tuned. Again, I'm Dr. Mike Matthews with the PT411. Thanks for joining me.